All right, we're gonna get started here. Welcome to week three of the launch, six weeks of business mentoring. I just wanna remind you as we keep moving along, the intention behind these six weeks are just to walk you through the most impactful income producing business building activities. And we're using the acronym PIPES, really, really common language within doTERRA um, and just helps guide your activities throughout the weeks as you're doing doTERRA as a business. The most important thing is to have those business hours carved out. But what I find so often is that even with those hours carved out, people come back to me and say, I don't even know what I should be doing during these times. And especially when you take time off, um, sometimes even if you've been doing this for a long time, when you come back, it's almost like a reset. What, what am I actually supposed to be working on? And so that's the design of this is to have something that you can come back to remind yourself for best practices for all of these parts. So we first week we talked about preparing, so important, right? Last week, we talked about inviting. I hope that that was helpful for you. Tons and tons of language tips and um, lived and learned, <laughs> what would I say, um, principles in that week. And then this week, we're going to be talking about presenting. Um, and every week when I put this together, I think, what do I actually have? to give of my experience. And then every week I'm pulling, putting together an entire PowerPoint um, deck of slides, realizing that they're actually, I've learned so much. And I'm sure a lot of you have, if you've been in the business for a little while, um, but it's so good for me even to just go back and say, yep, that's why I do it that way. Um, and so I hope this week is also helpful for you in that way. So I'm going to start with this quote um, from Eric Warre. With the last couple of weeks, we've talked about his book, GoPro. I think it's one that you should have and one that you should be giving people that you help launch because it's it's written within our direct industry, this direct selling industry. It's written with that frame of mind um, in mind. And he says, learning to tell my story was extremely valuable uh, in building my business. People aren't interested in how much you know, but they are interested in your story as long as you don't bore them to death with it. <laughs> I love that last part. So I wanted to start here because a lot of times we get into a week like present and we think classes and we think, I can't do this or I'm not ready for this. And for a couple of reasons, number one, we have a wrong mindset or idea of what a class actually is. And number two is we think we have to know so much more than we actually do. I hear this all the time when I'm starting brand new people is they don't know enough and that's why they can't get started yet. And the people that have been in the business for a long time that still aren't taking action are telling me I don't know enough and that's why they can't move forward. And I, and I love this quote because I've experienced it in my business is people aren't interested in how much you know. They don't care what scientific constituents are in the frankincense bottle all they want to know is that frankincense changed your life in the way that you manage your mood and your immunity and all that they want to know your story and as long as you don't bore them to death with it i had to include that part because there is some skill that comes with presenting and so um and it's not boring them to death it's being clear and concise and that's part of why i wanted these calls to be clear and quick and concise i'm not here here to bore you with the details. I want to get straight to what I think presenting looks like today. And it, it I love that I found this quote because it, it embodies exactly what I want presenting to be for you. It's crafting your own story. And so when you're thinking about getting into classes and teaching classes, if you're just starting out or if you have a very involved or active upline, you probably don't even have to teach the class. We're likely already have classes in our schedules that you can invite to in person and online and, and the like. So let's not get worked up into, I'm not ready to teach a class, but I guarantee what you are ready for is sharing your story. And I, I tell people this all the time, nobody wants to show up and hear my story when they were invited by you. I promise you, they actually want to know your story. They want to know how 
you interact with the oils, how much you love them, how they've changed your life. And so that's the cool part about this launch and having the support of an upline. They can teach the content of the classes, but what will be missing if you don't step in is your story. And so that's what I'm going to encourage you this week to hone in on crafting your story, something that you can share at the beginning of the class and the end of the class that really wraps your people up in why you invited them. So crafting your story has four parts. It starts with your before the background, kind of the problem. Typically it's a health related problem, right? It could be a biz. It could be a a story about the business. Maybe the business of doTERRA has impacted you more than the oils. That's that's common. Um, But what does your before look like? What didn't you like about your before? How did that make you feel? How did that add chaos to your life or your relationships or whatever? And then how doTERRA came to the rescue? How did doTERRA get introduced to you? And how did that change everything? Giving you results. And then the, the really sweet spot of crafting your story is how it affects your future. I'm going to explain more about that. So anyway, I hope you have those four points written down because they matter. So I I put together this PowerPoint um, yesterday and today. And then as uh, as I um, was headed this way today, I'm getting some feedback here. Got it. Um, I get an email from a presidential diamond in doTERRA. I just happened to be on her her list, her name, her email list, her name is Susan Johnson. And um, normally I'll be honest, I delete most of her emails, which, you know, goes back to inviting. Um, I don't, I don't have a direct relationship with her. It's not, doesn't impact me. Anyway, didn't mean to go that direction, but side note, but I, for some reason I did flip through this and it, it caught me, ended up reading the whole email. And I think this is why I ended up reading the whole email because it was actually her story in it. And it's short. That's the point here. Um, so she's got a picture of her holding her little boy. I think he's two or three year old, three years old with her husband standing next to her, leaving the hospital after his diagnosis of cancer at a really, really young age. And they had spent 15 days in inpatient hospital stay. So here's what she says. This picture was taken as we left the hospital after my son's diagnosis and our initial 15 day inpatient hospital stay. It was the beginning of our cancer journey. It was the start of learning how to humbly, brokenly, and with hope walk the same path that you currently find yourself walking or are hoping to avoid. And as a result of our experiences, I hope I can educate and empower you with some of the foundational resources we use to fight cancer differently. Our story had a very happy ending. And I believe with all my heart, it was because of the natural complementary therapies we implemented alongside the conventional treatment. Do you hear her story in there? Like that's the craft of her story. The before, the background, the problem, right? This diagnosis, like mind blowing diagnosis, right? Can you imagine your two or three year old getting diagnosed with with cancer? Um, And then what you didn't like about your before, right? She she had to start like humbling herself. She felt broken. She was walking a path that she was hoping to avoid. Um, And then how doTERRA came to the rescue as a result of our experiences, she got educated and empowered with foundational resources that were able, allowed her to fight cancer differently. And her results, she doesn't actually go into them in detail, which I like, and is going to be part of my point. She just says, our story had a very happy ending and then transitions into the future for the person she's talking to. And I believe with all my heart, it was because of the natural complementary therapies that we implemented, like, I know how to do this for you. So that's only like 15 seconds. And isn't it intriguing? So anyway, I didn't um, even read the end of her email there, because I was like, that's literally what I'm talking about. I want you to start crafting your own story. So mine would sound something like this. And maybe you've heard this in some of my classes. So before, before I met doTERRA, it was, it was 2014. I was, I had been introduced to the natural lifestyle. I was actually an office manager in a chiropractic office and we didn't have any drugs in our house. We, we were eliminating processed foods. We were getting rid of toxins. We were living the natural lifestyle for the first time. I wasn't raised like that, but I'd been introduced to it. But the problem was there was this gap for me. I knew that when my kids got sick, that like they were going to heal. Right. But there was this middle ground where it's like, you do everything that I know, but it gets me to this point and I can't get over this gap until they're healing without wanting to lose my mind. Cause I'm watching them express these symptoms and I don't really know what to do. And so there was a moment where I had a two-year-old and she was sick, you know, all of the snotty nose, not sleeping well, all the things. And my friend said, Hey, you should try this. And it was doTERRA breathe oil. And I had no idea what I was doing, but I trusted her. I put the oils where she told me to bottoms of the feet, upper back. And I'm going to tell you that experience totally changed my life. And so normally at this point, I say, 
um, she slept through the night and I tell the end of the story. But as I was processing this, I think the most powerful way for me to do my class would be to share up to that point and then come back to it at the very end and say, after I've taught you all the content of the class, so you remember that story I was sharing at the beginning about my daughter and the breathe oil? Well, she ended up sleeping through the night after I applied that for the first time. And it totally revolutionized the way that I looked at that gap. Remember I was talking about, you know, applying everything natural that we can and, and trying to get over into the other side, into the land of healing. Like I knew it was going to happen, but how, how do I actually survive the days until that happened? And the oils were the answer to that. And so that's why I had you here tonight. That's why I want you to get started with oils. I want you to have them in your home because I know what it feels like to live in that gap. And I know what it feels like to have the tools that allow you to cross that bridge. And that story might not be why you're here today. It might be for something totally different, but I know that you have a reason to be well, or you wouldn't be here tonight. And so I'm going to come around and I want to help you figure out a, a plan for getting started. Anyway, isn't that cool? That's, that's what I'm talking about. That's what you guys have to offer. Um, when even just starting out in doTERRA, because there's nothing to know, right? You, you knew your, you know, your before, you know what it was like, you know, how to tear entered the scene and you know what your results are. Um, you may need some help with how it affects your future if you've not processed that before. But anyway, I want you, I want you to be thinking about that as we talk today. So presenting is about developing skills of transferring belief. That's what I was doing to you right there. I was transferring the, lots of belief to you. Hopefully you're receiving it, <laughs> but I was transferring the belief that I'm just like you. I'm a mom just like you. I have kids just like you. Even though I had been educated about a lot of natural resources, I still was left with misunderstanding or not knowing what was my options, what were available to me. And then um, I, I transferred the belief that there was a solution. So that's the whole part of presenting in a class. It's transferring belief of what you know, what you've experienced, your story to someone else. So starting with the powerful opening, is a great way to bring people in and just, can you imagine if, if season Johnson started her classics classes like that? And maybe she does, maybe she's like in 2004, I don't know what year it was in 2004. My, my two-year-old son was diagnosed with cancer and I, and I thought he was going to die. Like I, I didn't know what I know now. And anyway, and went into this, it was the beginning of our cancer journey. And I had to start learning humbly and brokenly all of the, like, can you imagine like, everyone's watching, right? Everyone's listening. And so maybe you don't have a cancer story. I don't think you have to. Mine is about coughing and snot. Like it's not, that's not mind blowing crazy, but it's, 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 it's real to me. And that's how you create the, the power in the beginning. So that's your story. So you're connecting with your attendees that way and you're sharing your intentions to serve them. Um, I'm going to talk about this in another slide, but I like telling them where we're going with the class. I like them to know I'm going to go through three ways to use oils. I'm going to talk to you about the three cool things about oils. And then I'm going to answer your questions. We're going to go through ailments. What's bothering you? What makes you want to consider oils? And I'm going to give my recommendations. And then at the end, if, if we find some oils that can help you, then I'm going to help you get started. I want them to know what to expect. And then eliminating distractions. So, so important. I, I had this whole list here because I've experienced all of it, or I've heard stories from everybody that I've been a part with Indoterra for years. We can't have the TV on in the room, like kids watching TV that it just doesn't work. You can't have any TV pets, massively distracting, love the little fur babies, but, um, they cause a lot of distraction and ideally no children, unless it really fits the class, but you're going to have to tailor the class to be totally different. If you've got kids there, because you're going to go through way less content, you're going to need to be able to be interrupted, catch your thoughts, come back to where you were. Um, and I say no alcohol. I've seen people do classes with doTERRA and alcohol, but I'm telling you by the end of the class, everyone's a little laughy and it's really hard to garner attention when you're trying to close the class. So I think you could do a, a wine and oils, but I think they should have it at the end after you've done the class. Um, anyway, distractions make it difficult, even as a good presenter. I mean, I've got a degree in broadcast journalism. That's why this is easy for me. And I know it's not for everyone, but I still, if I have distractions, I'm in trouble. I can't stay. I can't stay focused. Um, children, I have three of them. And if they're in the room, not my own, anybody's, I, I can't stay focused. So um, if you're nervous about presenting, then you've got to get rid of the distractions. Preparation will increase your confidence. And I know this because I'm still experiencing it to this day presenting to you guys on Wednesdays at one o'clock every Monday. I'm like, I have nothing. I have nothing to offer. I'm not kidding. I'm like, 
I don't even know what I would go through this week to even presenting, like what, what would I even tell them? Like the four ways to teach a class. I don't know. And I get together, I prepare all my slides. And then I told my husband, I'm like, this week is going to be awesome. <laughs> it, it boosts your confidence because you realize the value that you're going to offer people and action refines action refines you. You have to take action to learn how you're going to make changes in the future to get better. So you've got to do it scared. You just have to do it scared. We've talked a lot about this at my, at my retreat. We talked a ton about this. And then asking why each attendee came. Uh, a lot of my classes, we at the beginning, we used to have a flyer that actually had this. So I did it more consistently, but asking your people that you invited, what do you want more of? And what do you want less of? Meaning what do you want more of? Like more sleep, more um, focus, more weight loss. What do you want less of less headaches, less pain? I mean, people know what they want less of for sure. More of might, might be more difficult, but those are good questions because you're going to use that information in, in the end, right? When you come up to them and you, and you recommend a way to get started, you've got to know what are their goals. And then remembering at the end and really throughout that you're selling the solution to their problems, not the products. And this is why people struggle and why sales feels hard is because you're trying to sell the bottle of adaptive and they don't know what that is, especially if all they see on your social is just a bottle. That means this means nothing to them that this doesn't, even if it was free, I'm not interested in something that I don't understand how it would help me. And so we don't sell adaptive or balance or lavender or tea tree. We sell the ability to calm our environment and get through the day without overwhelm, right? So you've got to use that language when you're talking about the oils. Um, and I love these questions. What changes if nothing changes? What does life look like if this continues for another year, another five years, another 10 years? These are questions that we used in the chiropractic world when people, they'd get examined by the doc, they'd sit down with their spouse and go through a corrective plan, which was typically like up to a year of them coming consistently in our office. And so, and it was a few thousand dollars. I mean, they had to have real belief transferred to them that that was worth their time and effort and resources. And so we had to like future pace them it, and this is where I learned this principle called dream versus dread. People are motivated by both, but I'm going to tell you more people will actually take action towards something that they dread, meaning to avoid the dread. So dream might be, I want to, I want to pursue using oils and natural remedies and get off some of my medications. So when I'm older, I can do vacations with my great grandchildren and we can walk, walk the beach and I can take them sailing or, or whatever. That would be a dream. Right. And that seems motivating, but then Monday morning hits and you have a headache and it's like, mm, I think I'm just going to take ibuprofen and I'm not going to work out today. Cause I got lots of things. Right. It's like, maybe that will still happen. Or maybe I, we won't go on a vacation when I'm older. It's easier to walk away from the dream, but the dread that feeling of waking up with pain, um, that, that like the cancer diagnosis, the heart disease, the diabetes that runs in your family, like that's what motivates people. But sometimes they haven't future paced it because around them, they're looking at all these other people that have headaches and isn't this normal. Um, and so it's like, well, what does this look like if you have headaches three, four times a week for another year? Like how many days away from your kids and your job is that? Like, what if it continues for five years and 10 years? And we would get comments in the chiropractic offices like, I, I won't make it to 10 years. And that's what it's like, okay, well then what do we need to do to get some change? And that's where it, you're transferring this belief and you're moving from selling into service because you're saying, I'm here to help you. Like, let's avoid this. I want this for you. I want to help you into this. So I hope that's helpful. Those are things that I've learned in the past. And those, those are ways to spark some follow-up at the end of a class that helps you move them towards a decision. And then here's my little note. If you didn't know, spearmint oil, one of my favorites is the oil of confident speech. So if you really struggle with this type of activity, then you need to be diffusing it during your class and applying it to your chest and your throat really powerful way to help your body move through those feelings. All right, most important in your class, 
is creating experiences with essential oils because we sell a product that actually offers experiences, right? That's why when you go to a jewelry party, they put the jewelry on you. And when you go to a makeup party, they actually help you apply your makeup. You, they, when you create an experience, it's so much more difficult to walk away from a sale because you're like, well, now I know what I look like in this makeup and I, and I know how I feel with this necklace on or these rings or whatever. Um, and so we have to do that with our product too. And the cool thing is our product smells freaking amazing. Like don't pass around oregano, you guys. I don't care if they've ever smelled oregano. I want them to smell wild orange and breathe and we're dripping the oils onto our hands and I'm teaching them how to take deep breaths and rub on the back of the neck. I want deep blue on the shoulders of the most in pain person in the room, right? Because at the end, I wanna be like, how are your shoulders? And they're gonna say, oh my gosh, I already feel so differently. Um, I made the mistake of doing it at the very end of the class. Um, one of the, my pregnancy, birth and babies classes, we, um, a girl had hung around and all of a sudden find out she's got crazy pain between her shoulder blades, applied the deep blue. And within three minutes, she's like, I kid you not, I feel a hundred percent. I'm like, ah! What if that would have happened during the class? What if I would have been smart enough to be like, is anybody here like experiencing some tension between their shoulders or neck or back where we could apply and see how this works? Like, and then she would have third party said, I kid you not, I have a hundred percent freedom of this pain. Like that's the experiences in that third party endorsement. That's so important in the class. That's why I'm a little negative against online classes, because how do you create that? Right. You need to probably mail them something ahead of time or what you have to get creative. Right. And so this is so often why sampling before an invite to a class is so effective because they come knowing that oils work. And so if they haven't been sampled before, you don't have to freak out. People can come to classes without being sampled, but the work of that belief building that has to happen in the class. Otherwise, I mean, you can send them with samples home and start the sampling process, but that's how you delay enrollments for weeks. And that's, I mean, I've been there. I am speaking from experience. So keeping it simple. Remember, people don't care about all the things you know, they care about your story. Um, and so part of that is what, what I want you to share. And obviously there's a few things that, you know, there's a few things to know that you do wanna share. It mostly centers around the, the three ways to use oils, the three cool things about oils, and a few of the oils that are must-haves for every home and how you use them, right? Um, and so you can skip all the extras. You don't wanna complicate the class. I don't want them leaving saying, I'm gonna think about it. If they're leaving saying, I'm gonna think about it, your class was way too complicated, I promise you. If they have to go home and discuss it all with your husband, they didn't come, I mean, they can talk with their husband, but they should be going home saying, I'm gonna tell my husband, this is what we need to do. Because um, we, <laughs> we want it to be simple enough that they know, I have a problem, here's a solution, and I have someone that's gonna support me in it. Um, what they also will not leave thinking if your class is complicated is, I could totally do this business. They never think that. And that's the biggest mistake I made from the very beginning. I had all the PowerPoints. I stood up at the beginning of the class. I had big words. We talked about sesquiterpenes and frankincense and all this kind of stuff. And sure, I maybe looked like I knew a lot and nobody ever said, I think I could do this just like you. I mean, they all said, whoa, that was amazing, Melissa. That was so much information. I loved it, right? And a lot of them went home to think about it. Nobody ever asked to do the business with me. And it took me a long time to find my people. And so what I want you to do is something, this really simple steps. Sit down during your class. Don't stand up. Sometimes I stand up because I want to have a little authority, like an oil study. I like to stand because I want them, I want them to, it to feel differently than like a basic class. But if I'm with my friends or I'm with people I know, family, I want to sit. I sit down. I just sat at my last class last night. And honestly, I skipped the PowerPoint. If it's a basics class, there's no reason for a PowerPoint. You see me do PowerPoint because I'm teaching online. It's a little bit different. It's a little better. Maybe it helps me stay on track. And if there's things I want them to screenshot or whatever, but I'm telling Telling you you don't need a PowerPoint to do this business, okay? You can, it's, but it's not necessary because you definitely don't duplicate yourself. So I taught a, cl a class last night on the immune system. What was the feedback? Like, awesome. So, so grateful that everyone loved the class, but did anyone walk away thinking I can do that? right? And there, there's a huge element of that when you're starting out and you're trying to find your people, you, you have to have people thinking I can do that. And then being repetitive. That's why there's 
three cool things. Like, could there be more than three cool things? Of course there is, right? But we go through just three cool things and three ways to use and three types of people and three ways to purchase. That repetitive nature and words is how people remember things. Keeping it to 40 minutes, I've gotten so strict on this. You guys, my classes used to be two hours long. No kidding, because I had a PowerPoint, right? And I was going through the squitter pins. I mean, how much time do you need to go through all that, right? And there's a reason that pastors have sermons that are 40 minutes because they know how long human attention spans are. And it's not 40 minutes. It's actually more like four minutes. That's why the opening is so important to get people engaged. But 40 minutes has to be the max. What we want them to do is show up for a seven o'clock class and then look at the clock when you're done and go, oh my gosh, it's not even eight o'clock yet. That's what we want them thinking at the end of the class because then they have time to sit and look through enrollment options. If you push it, to the very end, you go an hour or over an hour, like an hour and a half. And then they're like, oh my gosh, it's almost nine o'clock. That's what 8.30 looks like, right? So now it's 8.30 and it's like, I got to get home, put my kids to bed. My husband's going to wonder where I'm at. I'll get back to you, right? And how much fun is that follow-up? It sucks. <laughs> it sucks. So offer, and then finally offering only two to three ways to get started. A confused mind does not buy. So how many kids do we have in doTERRA? I don't know, five, six, seven. There's no reason to ever give them more than two to three options. If they want more options, you can give them a link and they can go look at the rest of them later. But all they want to know is what do you recommend for what I've told you? And that's why we go back to these, like knowing, knowing these, um, why each attendee came, what they want more of, what they want less of, what is their dream or their dread? What are they trying to avoid? If we know the answers to those questions, then there is probably only a couple options that make sense for them anyway. So that's important. Okay, I've already alluded to this a little bit, but let's talk in-person versus online. I'm gonna tell you the truth. I love both of these options. I think they're awesome. And I know that you can enroll people either way, but let's just do a little engagement here and talk about the pros and cons of these options because you got to decide what what you want right so in person there's a huge pro here you guys they can smell the oils they can feel touch experience the oils the other huge pro is that they're sitting right there and the follow-up is simple you walk up to them and say hey what do you think is the next best step for you in person rocks in that way, but it's also harder because it's hard in this season, a lot of times to get people to show up to in person. I will argue that if they've had a good sampling experience and you've actually invited them effectively, people will show up. If you have value that you're providing, people will show up. Um, we had 12 people at our in-person pets class. We had nine at the in-person pregnancy, birth and babies class. There was value that was given and we invited strategically. Um, so that's, that's in person. Online, maybe it's easier to get people to come to, maybe because it's just like they can sit in their pajamas and, and hit a link, right? But the follow up is so much harder. It's so much harder. How many of you have done an online class and it's like, what do I say after that? Like, hey, so glad you were on, right? And then what? Um, and so there are ways to help move people forward. We're going to talk about that next week and enrolling, but that is definitely more difficult. And they like, can't smell the oils. There's no scratch and sniff. And you're selling a product that smells and gives you physical reaction. That's really challenging on online. The best part of online is you can teach people and support your team and find new people that don't live here. I did a class to four women, actually there's probably more like six in South Africa a couple of years ago. How freaking awesome is that? I could have never done in person. I was able to enroll a couple of them. I couldn't do that if I wasn't teaching online classes. So they're both necessary, but you have to decide how, if you're willing to navigate the cons of both um, before you move forward. So um, what, what I will say is in person, there are different things you can do in person than online. Your online classes shouldn't look like your in-person classes and your in-person classes should not look at your online classes. Like don't not pass around the oils in the class when they're sitting right here, right? And don't like do things interactive online that you can't, yeah, it, it's just, you have to know the audience that you're looking for. So just something for you to contemplate. All right, closing. Closing your class starts at the beginning. I have to do these mindset reframe shifts for myself all the time. Would it be more or less strange to tell them all the reasons that you love doTERRA oils, how it's changed everything in your health, and then send them on your way without telling them how to actually buy them? Would that not be more strange? 
Like, why would you have brought me to this class, went and raved about all of these ways to use oils and then be like, see ya. Like that makes no sense. It makes more sense actually to say, this is how you get them at the cheapest price possible if that's the next best step for you. Would it be more or less strange to never say at the beginning of the class, hey, by the way, I'm gonna ask you to make a purchase if you're ready at the end of this class. That's something that I really struggled with at the beginning. And someone uh, taught me how, uh, taught me this principle that makes so much sense. When people are sitting at your class, they're expecting there's going to be a purchase part of it, right? Have you ever been invited to a party, a product party before? And aren't you just like waiting for the moment when the catalogs get passed around and they're like, okay, write on your little slip what you want. Like you're waiting for it, right? And it, and for me, it made me on edge. Like I felt like I hardly listened to anything they said because I'm sitting there thinking about my budget and what I'm going to actually spend and like what's the cheapest thing in the catalog that I can buy like to get out, right? Um, and so I have switched to saying it right away at the beginning in my intentions. So my intentions of the class is to equip you to know the three cool things about essential oils and the three ways to use them. I want to make sure you leave with some natural remedies and ideas for how to combat the top two or three health areas. And then at the end, I'm going to help you discover how to get started at the cheapest price possible, especially if we found some oils that we know could help you. I want to help you take that next step forward if, if you're ready to do so. Like you can always have a little caveat, right? No one's going to be chained to their chairs. They're all going to be able to leave if they want, but just so you know, we will do that at the end. So it's like, okay, well, I know that's coming at the end. Now I can just listen to the information that's presented. So in the same way that we set expectations for sampling, like I'm going to follow up with you in two days, set your intentions for the class at the beginning so that they know what's ahead. They actually appreciate that more than you think. All right, I'm going to finish with this investing in your self-development. This is a quote by Kristen Boss. She has a purposeful social selling podcast um, that I think you would enjoy. But she says, if you don't like selling, if it feels gross, it's because of your thoughts and your experiences about it. It feels gross to you because you have fears about other people's thoughts and feelings about you selling things. You are completely paralyzed. Maybe you um, identify with that word. You're completely paralyzed because you are consumed, wondering what other people think of you. You are consumed about how other people perceive your motives behind why you do what you do. And honestly, their perception of you is none of your business. What they think of your business is none of your business. What they think of you selling is none of your business. Your business is helping people who want help. I love that because it frees me. Okay. I'm not here for all the people that aren't ready. I'm here for the people that are, and there's going to be some of both. And I'm looking for the people that want help, right? Um, so hopefully that helps you. All right, week three, assignment and challenge here. I want to make sure your launch classes are scheduled and that you're very clear on the value that each of those bring to those that you are inviting. If you don't know what value they receive, you will not invite well. That's last week if you need to review that. And then I want you to prepare a 30 to 60 second commercial or story for why you love doTERRA oils and how they've changed your life. This is going to be the most powerful testimony that you share at your class. And um, maybe you want to figure out how you'll break it up, how you'll share the beginning and then how you'll share the end. Um, a little side note there, if it's a story about someone else like this that has cancer, what I loved about what she said here is that um, our story has a very happy ending. Like there might have to be like a little line so that they don't think the whole time during the class that like your son died of cancer, right? We don't want them, we don't want them not knowing what happens at the end, but it, they don't have to know the whole details of it. That's what you can share at the end that helps you really close it up. But anyway, preparing that story for why you love doTERRAs and how they've changed your life. And then I really can't encourage you enough to get back into the sales guide and look at page four and five. The first week we talked about page three and now we're ready for page four and five. It's called embracing sales. I thought it was such a powerful experience of breaking down the misconceptions that I have about sales. Um, you go through and write down a negative experience that you've had with the salesperson. It was so easy to do, right? They give you three bullet points. I'm like, doesn't stop talking, pushes you, makes you feel pushed. Like you'll be able to think of those. And then how did you feel? Describe why it made it a negative experience for you. And then the second part is thinking of the last time you've had a positive experience with a salesperson. And that actually wasn't too hard either. I had thought of two different situations. I'm not, I'm not 
I'm not going to share them here just because we're over time, but um, it really helped me process why sometimes my guard goes up when, when I'm in a sales environment, because I've had bad experiences. And it's so helpful for me to reframe through my good experience when I've actually spent way more than I thought I was going to in that situation, but because I was actually educated on the product and I was led to a decision that actually served my family, I was like, Okay. I mean, I was planning to buy a, a bag of spinach in Costco and I left with a $500 blender, but I'm like actually okay with it because, um, I, I know the purpose that it's going to have once I get it home and we've used this blender. This is a real story every single day for the last five years, probably longer. Um, and it's served my family. So anyway, that's why that exercise is so important. And then the challenge, if you're up for a challenge, I want you to plan to teach the opening, maybe even the three cool things and the three ways to use oils at one of your launch classes. It is very, very simple language. That's the point, right? It's supposed to be simple. Um, that's in the daily mentor calls. If you get into the classes part after you get through um, number 10, when you get in 11 through 14 and beyond, she'll teach you those. Um, there's a script right there. You can memorize it. In fact, I encourage you to do so. And if you know you have blocks about selling, then I think you should check out this podcast um, with Kristen Boss. Look her up. Um, and then you, there's great, great content in GoPro about getting clear on selling. So um, I think that's also what you should do. So that's it. What's to come? We're going to finish our last two weeks with enroll next week and then support. And then our seventh week, or sorry, our sixth week, if you're keeping track, we have six weeks of mentoring. That's only five letters. <laughs> our last week, we're going to talk about placements, which will be so key. After all of this work, ideally, you'll have enrollments that you need to place. And I want to teach you how to do that most effectively. So um, all right. I appreciate y'all being here.